Hello everybody, so I am editing a photo that I took of Chris from Scotty's um, first birthday pictorial and the reason why I'm filming my screen and not doing a screen capture is because I don't know how to do that on a PC so anyway I posted a little bit of um, just Photoshop magic I suppose on my Instagram and people really liked it and a few people requested that I make a vlog about it so here we are I'm gonna show you a few of my favorite tricks when it comes to editing a photo um, so things that I mentioned in the Instagram story was I like to remove unsightly elements like outlets like this so for things like this I like to use the healing brush and I just sample from the side and voila it magically makes it disappear the reason why I'm using the healing brush for this particular one and not the stamp tool is because the healing brush takes into account um, the texture and the light and the color from the pixels around it so it's able to blend it in a lot easier and there is absolutely nothing touching this object it is isolated i did that on purpose so that it would be easier to take out so the healing brush does really well for alterations like that um, i'm only gonna get rid of anything that's distracting like this you know it doesn't really add to the photo but when it comes to and i'll show you how to get rid of this big one in a bit but when it comes to photoshopping the person itself the only thing i want to get rid of is um distracting elements and elements that won't be there in a few weeks so i won't really touch her face or her body shape or anything like that but things like the stray hair around her head i'm just gonna quickly do a pass over that just because if we had a stylus um in the shoot then they probably would have cleaned this up for me anyway and it's just because it was the two of us it was the end of the day and we were both tired so we weren't really thinking about like oh is your hair okay or anything like that so I'm just gonna take it out it's super easy for this particular one i am using the stamp tool i've moved from the healing brush to the stamp tool and i'm using a small brush this is the disadvantage of using the stamp tool so if you sample from an area that's brighter than the area that you're trying to copy it's going to be very obvious like that versus the healing brush which will be able to like see that the area around here is not as bright but um, I'm using the stamp tool because it is too close to her face so it's it's a little thing like it's a super little adjust adjustment but I think it makes a difference so we're just gonna leave it I do see that there's a dark spot here I'll fix that first so things like this where I could try to sample it from somewhere else but I don't want to so I'm just going to add a curves adjustment layer clip it that's what this button is onto the layer underneath it so it will only affect that layer and like I said this is too dark so what we're going to do is we're gonna use this so I know exactly where it is and it's gonna drop a point this is the part of the curve where that is and then I'm just gonna use my arrow keys to pop 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 push that up and because it's affecting the entire layer so it you can see it's blending here sure but it's also making all of this that we worked on too bright so now i'm going to hit um control i which will invert that entire layer and basically hide everything that we've just done then i'm gonna get my brush tool and paint with white because white will show what you've done and black will hide it and then just very lightly paint over this area and then zoom out and now you can't see it so here it is without the curves adjustment you, you can't see it's too small wait okay here we go let's move i mean it's fine it could be like some weird shadow you know but i know it's there so i took it out and here it is without can you see that i hope you can see that all right um now let's tackle this big mirror on the side what I'm doing here is every time I make a change, I like to add it onto a new layer. If I was being smarter, I would label each individual layer so I could find it later, but I'm not going to do that because the tripod is in front of the um, Q 
keyboard so okay so what I did was I just stamped everything that was visible into a new layer so that I can then take my lasso tool I'm using the polygonal lasso tool all right let's preserve this and then just go around this area so the reason why i'm using the polygonal lasso tool is because it's a lot faster in this case and this is like an object that has defined shapes so it's easier to do that so i'm just gonna circle around that area basically select it then i'm gonna go to is it edit yes it's edit and then go down to content aware fill and photoshop will do this magic thing where it will compute for me the areas and basically do the retouch for me so as you can see it's not great but taking it out manually would be a lot more difficult than just like editing this little like oh this is too bright and this is kind of blurry and weird like that that would be a lot easier for me to deal with than taking everything out so what it's doing is the green highlighted areas it's saying that oh these are the areas that you want me to look at and take this green highlight thing and put it here right so it's studying that and um, we can try to make this a little bit better by like going over like oh no I don't want you to sample from her body like I don't want you to clone or um, whatever it is the machine is doing so I'm just gonna delete her from the highlight and then as you can see when I do that and then when I'm done editing the mask here it's gonna update there, let's add this bit of the carpet. The more information, the better, I suppose. I feel like that's the best that we're gonna be able to do you just press ok it will put it in a new layer up here and since I just stamped everything that was visible this layer is actually useless I just needed that so it would know what to sample from so I'm gonna delete that and this is now our wall and that looks horrible but that's fine we can fix that so I'm gonna add a new layer on top of that all right so I'm just gonna take like the roughed edges so the reason why this is standing out so much is because uh this is a shadowy area although like you can see there is a line here the shadow that's from the roof so it kind of makes sense that the shadow goes all the way down that way i don't mind that so much but it's too bright here which this is a textured wall so it could also make sense but i'm just going to like lessen it a little bit like first i'm going to take out a bit of this shadow this is the shadow from this is actually still the the wall the actual wall this isn't from the edit so this is the shadow from the um mirror so i'm just gonna blend that out a little bit i'm just using the healing brush and just basically sort of sampling from around it so it blends in a little better um this one also like i just find this line is a little too jagged and then we can try to do the same trick that we did earlier by applying a curves layer and clipping it onto that and highlight selecting this area up so we know that area is this spot right here and then lowering the brightness of that so it's lowering everything because i'm on the wrong layer all right that's fine um I clipped it onto this layer, which is the layer that we're using to blend everything, when I should have clipped it onto this layer, which is the layer underneath it. Clip. And as you can see, that's not great because it's now affecting the entire thing that uh, we used to replace it. So that's when you invert your mask so it all goes away and then you use your brush tool white and then I actually have the opacity set at like 50% and I'm using a um, tablet which I think makes life so much easier for myself I cannot edit without a tablet um, what I'm going to do now is the part where I kept trying to blend it in on the layer above I'm just gonna erase that because now that I've lowered the color, I've lowered the color, I've lowered the 
um, brightness. It's actually blending in a lot better without without the edits. So I'm just gonna take that out. I just want it to. I want this area to look like this area. And then once I have that, then I'm gonna go back to the layer on top of that. And I am going to blend it again. So now I'm gonna blend it with the correct um, exposure, as it were. Because that would be more believable. Alright, let's zoom out and take a look at what we've done. And as you can see, the bright patch, it's not as bright, it's not as noticeable, you see. Because your eye will naturally go to like bright spots in the image. So that's why I like to take care of those things. Now, <laughs> the elephant in the room that we are not addressing. Let's just take care of this. That This is actually going to be a lot easier than you would think. So I'm going to go to the stamp, the clone stamp tool. And then I am going to... Um, sample from this area trying not to get her feet and the reason why I'm sampling from this area is because if I match up I'm holding down the shift key so to keep this a straight line if I match up this line it's more believable to your eye because you just know that like oh that's the that's just what the wall looks like make this smaller and then just kind of like blend in this area and now I'm gonna sample from this corner and then just da -da -da, paint that in so things like I'm gonna keep painting even though I already see a mistake sort of forming just get this edge here all right so things like this are a dead giveaway that you've um, photoshopped something do you see the repeating pattern here and then here it's just because it sampled from this area and then it put it over here, I suppose. And then like I sampled from here and I put it over there. So what you want to do is just go around that. Maybe use a smaller brush. Go around that and just erase any discernible marks like this because that makes it so obvious. So you just want to take that out. all the way here because looking at it now even though this is a part of the wall I actually find it quite distracting I mean not bad right I we're it's super lucky for this particular edit because um, the wall here is very textured so I can't it's gonna be really hard to mess it up um, another favorite tool that I have is the fade tool, which I use a lot. So say I want I'm, this dark spot is kind of bothering me. So I'm going to sample from the area next to it and then I'm just going to paint it on. And as you can see, it's not blending super great. So if you hit um, Control Shift F or find fade somewhere here, I don't know where, then it will just fade the very last thing that you did. So you, you do like you paint something or you clone something and don't touch anything else. You go straight for the fade. And then it will just fade that in, the last thing that you did, and it just makes it a little bit more natural. And let's see. Okay, now I got to take care of the carpet. Uh, let's do the carpet on a separate layer. And then if I don't make any mistakes, then I'll just merge it down. So still on the stamp tool, I'm just going to sample from the layer this this area and then um things that i'm looking at when i'm sampling at this point is uh the grain of the carpet as you can see it does have a pattern that's going this way so if i sampled from here <coughs> excuse me Whew. i don't have covid i just choked all right so um paint 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 away our problems This is why I like to put it on a separate layer. So as you can see, it kind of like made the, the work here, the work that we did earlier, it kind of messed that up. 
so but it's on its own layer so now what i can do is i can easily just once again take the polygonal lasso tool and then draw a straight line here where i'm like no you took away my nice crispy edge maybe give it a pixel blur a feather it a little bit by 0.7 pixels not a lot and i'm just gonna delete that delete 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 I'm making this side of the wall very high. So this is the advantage of putting it on another layer. Now I can just control T, transform it, press the control button while I drag this down, back down to where I want it to be. There, and just kind of transform it that way. All right, let's see what that looks like. I don't think it looks great. Oh, you know what? It's not half bad. So let's merge that and merge that. I think I'm done with the carpet, so merge that. So uh, I guess that's pretty much it. That's everything I would do. Let's take a look at our complete before. So this is what it looked like before. And then the first thing that we did was we used the healing brush to take out the outlets. Then we kind of fixed the stray hairs around her head, which created a dark spot. So we lightened the dark spot. Then we took out the mirror poorly. And then we um, fixed any exposure problems from the thing that we took out. Then we blended everything in. And voila, there's your finish finished. There's your finished image. All right. Okay, I'm back because I still have a few more of these photos to edit and we took a bit of time to fix this so I'll, I wanted to show you like a quicker way to do it. Um, so this is another image that's very similar, the same shot, same everything, you know, um, just a slightly different pose so I wanted to give her variety so I'll edit this as well. I'm gonna take this image, open it up in Photoshop and then I'm going to take the image that we just edited and then open that back up in Photoshop as well. Edit the original because I added a sharpening, uh, brightening layer on top. So the color is not going to be the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this layer minus the, the bright brightening that I did. So the light is a match. Then I'm going to stamp it once again. Stamp everything that's visible. That's going to be Control shift alt e on your keyboard it's basically falling on the whole left side of your keyboard and then drag that over here that's closest no i don't want to save any of those changes i'm gonna lower the opacity of this one and make sure that um things are more or less lined up set my opacity back to 100 press alt while you press your mask tool how come you can't see as much of the screen as you could earlier? Maybe I should zoom out. Yeah, okay. Um, so, and then now that this is masked, I'm going to take my brush tool and then um, taking all the work that we did earlier, I can easily paint this in. This is still set at 50% opacity. Set that at 100%. Then you can just boop, 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 boop. And paint that in. So the nice thing about it is you do all the hard work once and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Even the outlets, like I can just go back and paint that in. Oh, that didn't do such a great job. I'll fix that one manually. <laughs> that didn't do such a great job because I'm too close to Chris. All right, so now instead of having to redo all of that, all I have to do is, well, I'll come back and fix her stray hairs. Oh. I didn't notice this earlier. There's some dirt on the wall. I just have to get rid of those. And then just remove this outlet because this was too close, I guess, or well, I don't know why it's not working out, but it's like a lot less work than I had to do earlier. So, ta-da, that's like three minutes versus the 20 minutes that the first one took. 